basically James Bond meets the assassin Nikita and they have to foster a foster daughter who is Professor Xavier. Did I cover that right? Well, today we're talking Spy Family. As far as recommendations goes, I've had some good ones and some bad ones here on the channel. I absolutely love checking out what you guys have to recommend for me, and sometimes they are absolute bangers, and other times, well, they're Tokyo Revengers. And today, the show that I'm going to talk about being Spy Family is somewhere in between those, and not in the best of ways. So Spy Family obviously starts off with an absolutely phenomenal premise. I love it. It is very, very, very wholesome. This show just oozes the family unit, getting, you know, people who were definitely career focused now wanting to be family focused. And that is all over the show. For those of you who have seen Spy Family, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't seen Spy Family, why are you even here? Go watch Spy Family, check it out for yourself, then come back and see what else I have to say. So after I actually got done with the show, and this is where I'm gonna kind of start this, I was like, huh, I, mm, I feel weird. And the reason that I feel weird is because by the time I got done with like the 37 or 38 episodes that I had access to at the time, I, I didn't feel like the show did anything. So I actually went on YouTube and I was like, hey, Spy Family, like are people still talking about it now? Are people uploading about it? recently that are getting you know decent viewership because that's a really good metric for whether or not a show is successful if people are talking about it a year later or however long after you know the current episodes are up and come to find out no not really and I think what it is is that this show although it starts off with a really 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 fun premise you basically by the time you get to episode four there, there's nothing else that really happens in the show that's different. You get a spy whose mission is to go and do spy stuff, but he has to be pretend to be a family man, which means he needs to adopt a kid and have a fake wife, and they need to pretend to get in this, you know, illustrious, you know, really, really high educational school or whatever, so that way her kid can get close with the target's kid, and that way spy stuff. Anyway, it's actually fun. All of that is actually fun. Fun. Where the show falls off, though, is that the spy never really forgets that he's a spy, never really opens up to the family any in any real way. Yet yeah, minor moments here and there is fine. The woman, who is actually a professional assassin, she is just treated like an idiot through most of the show, which is just weird. I didn't really like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I like. I don't. I, I mean, I'm. A, I guess my mom was kind of the brainy one in the family, where my dad was the, you know, the the mechanical type, right? Like my mom was really good with like English and all that stuff, and my dad was really good with, you know, working with his hands and building stuff from the ground up and math and geometry and all that, and it, very very well rounded. I didn't see any of that. Like in this show, the dad has all of the skills and the mom can kill people, and I'm like, well, that's kind of weird because the dad can also kill people. They didn't balance those two characters well for me. The little girl in this show, although adorable for the first like 10 episodes, gets really annoying after that. Just, she just does. And the reason for that is one, she is a telepath or she, she, she can read your mind, right? She's a telepath. She is Professor Xavier, but she can't control your mind, which would be interesting. But as she goes through the show, her character doesn't get any smarter. Her character doesn't get any better. Her character really doesn't change at all in any reasonable way. Uh, she still thinks she's on this spy thriller action quest because she can read the minds of everybody around her and she's reading everybody's minds and all of a sudden it's like, oh, what's she going to do in this situation? And she's like four years old. Yeah, I know in the show they're like, oh, she's six. She lied about that. We don't actually know how old she is. She's probably three or four. But this four-year-old is making decisions as a four-year-old. Now, granted, a telepathic four-year-old, so maybe that denotes some intelligence there. That I just don't think four-year-olds are going to make. And I should know because I've had four of them. I mean, my oldest is almost 13 and my youngest just, you know, turned nine. So going back to what I really have a problem with with the show. Obviously, the main characters, when they start off, you meet them and you hope, man, this is going to be really cool. How are they going to deal with finding out about each other? And after 30 episodes, uh, 37, 38, whatever was up on Crunchyroll at the time, they don't. 
The little girl, she's a telepath. She knows the guy who's pretending to be her dad is a spy. She knows the woman who's pretending to be her mom is an assassin. She doesn't want to tell anybody because she's afraid that if anybody finds out she's a telepath, they'll give her back to the orphanage, and she doesn't want that. Makes total sense. The backstory there is actually really cool. But these characters, once you see episode three and how they interact in episode three, that's basically the show. You can stop at episode three and see all of the character development that you're going to see for the next 30 some odd episodes. And this is where the show really fell off. I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. Like, okay, the, the, what if the parents find out that, oh, they're, you know, how is that gonna play out? And are they gonna wanna kill each other? And are they gonna be put in this weird situation? Or what if one of the parents finds out that they're, you know, telepathic and then this, that, and the other thing. And it gets nowhere very slowly. I can see why nobody on YouTube is really talking about Spy Family after it coming out, after what was so weird, what seemed to be everybody raving about the show. Because to be perfectly honest, the show doesn't offer a whole lot after you get in to episode three and four. There's no character development anymore. And that was really, really sad. You get some cool moments and the wholesomeness of the show is really good, but that's not enough for me to want to watch a show. I mean, I'm sorry, I've never really cared too much about wholesome yeah, entertainment as my only form of entertainment. I would like something more. I would like the plot to develop more and Spy Family just had no developing plot. And to be honest, Although I might continue it if I hear good things about further episodes coming out, as of right now, I wouldn't recommend Spy Family to really get into and watch because there's there's little to no payoff, even in 30 episodes. But if you guys just want something wholesome to watch that you're just like, man, I just need uh, uh, something like a sweet taste of cotton candy for a while, this is absolutely your show. But for me, I'm not a big fan of sweets. Don't eat them a whole lot. And that is my review of Spy Family. If you guys would like to see my review of your recommendations, check out the next couple of them here. I am going to check out the Apothecary Diaries because I've been told that that was good and that's what you recommended. So stay tuned for that video. And I have another one. We're gonna revisit the truth in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood because I'm not done with that conversation yet. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, cheers everybody.